The uh, Meyerberg Award honors distinguished reporting in the tradition of the great New York Times reporter who set the standard for thought-provoking human interest journalism about everyday life and, and ordinary people. Um, so since this is to celebrate the late reporter as well as the honoree, I just want to take a few minutes to tell you a bit about Meyer Berger, who was always known as Mike. He could have been a character from the kind of black and white movie where everybody yells, stop the presses, and keeps the bourbon in the bottom drawer and keeps the hats on in the office. He was born in 1898. He dropped out of school at 12. Um, he got a start as an office boy on the New York world, Joseph Pulitzer's paper. <clears throat> in 1928, he moved to the New York Times. He covered everything. There was a terrible circus fire in Hartford, Connecticut that killed more than 165 people. He was there. The trial of the gangster Al Capone for tax evasion. He was there. But the feat the old timers are still talking about was his story on this unemployed 28-year-old World War II veteran named Harold Unruh, Howard Unruh. One day in 1949, he stalked through his neighborhood in Camden, New Jersey, firing his Luger pistol into shops and apartment windows and parked cars. 13 people died. And this was at that time something new, the lone gunman on a killing spree. So Berger jumps on the first train to Camden. He spent six hours there interviewing 50 witnesses. He goes back to his office, and in two and a half hours, he bangs out a 4,000-word story, reconstructing the rampage with precision and vividness. Basically, in less than nine hours, Mike Berger wrote a master's project. <laughs> so while he celebrated for that feat, he was also, he was loved for his mastery of another genre, the little gem, the human interest piece that turned the same keen eye for detail on the tiny dramas and the quirks and, and the sorrows and the charms of everyday life in the city. Many of them ran in a column he wrote three days a week called About New York. He wrote about the blind man who miscounted his steps in the Union Square subway station and fell to death in front of his train, in front of the train. The guy who cut the toenails of the leopard at the zoo. The woman who amassed a collection of half a million wishbones from various kinds of poultry. The man who was haunted by a guinea pig. And like all great reporters, he was much better at listening than at talking. He once had an audience at the Vatican with the Pope who wanted to compliment him on a story he'd done about some Catholic missionaries. The Pope ended the, office, the, uh, the, uh, the audience by saying, God bless you. This apparently left the reporter flustered, and God bless you too, sir, said Mike Berger to the Pope. <laughs> so in the spirit of Mike Berger, the journalism school is proud to honor Julia O'Malley of the Anchorage Daily News for her five-part series published in April and May of 2013. The Things That Happened, Two Boys and Cancer, with photographs and videos by Mark Lester. The series follows two high school boys in Anchorage, good friends who, in a wild coincidence, are diagnosed with cancer within months of each other. But this is more than a conventional story of medical crisis overcome. This is rigorously reported over the course of a year, written with warmth and sensitivity, but not a hint of sentimentality. It's also the story of an, the increasingly diverse contours of American faith, as the two families, one Lao Buddhist and the other Hmong animist, draw strength from their spiritual traditions. It's a moving, humane, enlightening series. It represents the best tradition of Mike Berger's human interest reporting. Julia O'Malley is a graduate of Smith College. Before becoming an award-winning columnist at the Anchorage Daily News, she reported on the court system and wrote often about the city's ethnic and minority communities. She's also worked for the Oregonian and the Juno Empire, has been a nanny, a barista, and a waitress, and for a while sold cheese at a deli counter. And here she is now, the winner of the Burger Prize, Julia. <laughs> Good morning. I'm so honored to be here, um, all the way from Alaska. <laughs> I wanted to congratulate all of you on the work that you have done at Columbia to earn your degrees. You all gained tremendous tools that you will now get to use to tell stories. And now I think many of you might be deciding where you might go to practice. For me, journalism has always felt like learning to play an instrument, 
Each story is an exercise, and each exercise informs the next. It has also been very caught up with my relationship, at least the last nine years that I have been practicing. It has been caught up with my relationship to a place, to Anchorage. Um, as you might imagine, living in Alaska is something like a long marriage. Sometimes you're in love, other times you're surviving. Um, but every time I write a story, I think about a question that my editor asked me a long time ago. He said, can you tell me what this can tell all of us about this place and the culture here? And every time I write a story, the answer to that question is different. And so I remain curious about the place I have lived and grown up. Um, some of where you all choose to go uh, to tell those stories will not be up to you because our business is volatile. Um, but I have come here from Anchorage, Alaska to tell you that there is no geographical limit on where good stories might be. In fact, um, you would be lucky to land in a place that is so lucky, for, I'm sorry, you would be lucky to land in a place that is so different from what you are used to that it dazzles you. Even a regular place can do this if you let it. Because underneath every run of the mill story, there is a better story. You've only got to unlock it. An editor who I adore, who spent his early career working in rural Alaska, in villages where you might disembark from a boat and find that the only person to explain what's going on is a grandmother who tells it to you in a whisper. He, t he tells me this, and I think of it. He says, uh, you must always slow down. You must always listen. Um, and this is harder than you might think in this day and age. Uh, you would luck be lucky if you were to land in a place small enough that the community becomes your teacher, where you can see the impact of your work in changes that happen after your stories are published. A place where people might do you the favor of calling you up to tell you when you've made a mistake. A place where you might write a critical story about a public official and then find yourself at the gym next to them on a treadmill. This has happened. <laughs> um, we're trained to observe, but we must not be so removed from our subjects that we do not have empathy, and we must never make the mistake of thinking that we are wiser than our audiences. This, too, is harder than it sounds. I almost missed writing the stories that bring me here today to receive the Berger Award. Um, they began as a reader tip, a high school fundraiser, you should cover it. It's going to be held in a gym. The breakdancing club is raising money for cancer. Um, and I wrote it down and I ignored it for three weeks and then, hungry for a story for the next day, I made myself my, my way to a uh, high school dance studio where I met a 16-year-old named Mitchell. And he pulled off his beanie and he was bald from cancer treatment. And he told me the fundraiser, it wasn't just for him, but it was for his best friend, Steve. And they had been diagnosed with two different cancers, three weeks apart. And then I learned that he was Buddhist, and his parents believed that his cancer was caused by wrongs committed in his past life, and that he was obligated to go to a temple and serve there as a monk in order to correct what had gone wrong. And then I met Steve, who's quiet, but who asked me to his house. And his parents said, maybe I could come in a few weeks. They were going to kill a pig, and that would satisfy the hunger of the spirits, which had led to his illness. And there it was, a remarkable story under a run-of-the-mill one. And I had almost missed it, because even though I am practiced at what I do, I had for a moment forgotten to listen. Thank you very much for your attention, and thank you for this honor.